When somebody asks you for the time, usually it's a very simple exercise of just glancing over at your watch, perhaps even your smartphone, and just relaying it to them. It's almost so thoughtless that we do it with so much conviction and certainty that we can never really get it wrong, can we? Yeah, what exactly is time? How do we actually know that time is real? At this moment, you might think that I sound like a madman. Indeed, scientists for the longest time have believed that time is absolute and universal. We all believe that time applies universally to everybody, everywhere else, all at once. Something that exists independently that we are all governed by. Yet, Albert Einstein, in his theories of relativity, actually showed that time is not absolute nor universal. That time is actually relative. Specifically, time can speed up or slow down depending on the speed that you're traveling at. Now, this might sound absurd, but it has already been proven. The faster that we go, the slower time gets. And indeed, astronauts who are in the rockets and even in the space stations that are circling around the Earth, they experience time much slower than we do, which becomes a very mind-boggling concept if you think about it. If you can go fast enough, that time dilution and disparity will be much more substantial and significant. But beyond that, Einstein also showed that time is interwoven with space, constituting a unit known as space-time. That time itself is a dimension in our universe. Beyond the three dimensions, the forward, backward, upwards and downwards, there's also time. Einstein's theory of relativity allowed scientists and allowed us to see the universe in a brand new perspective as a static four-dimensional block with three spatial dimensions and time being the fourth dimension. And under this theory, in this block, space and time exist simultaneously. Time doesn't flow. It exists. It is a part of the fabric of our universe. But at the same time, the time that is experienced by all of us in this universe, in this block, is relative, depending where you are and depending on the conditions of space-time. So there may be parts of the universe where time is experienced in an entirely different way. What may appear to be the present to us, to one observer, may be the past to a different observer. And in fact, I think the movie Inception really showcased this concept of time dilution, this relativity of time, very well when the characters were on the planet that was so close to this supermassive black hole that the gravitational pull of that black hole actually warped the space-time of the planet that they were on. That every minute they were on that planet was actually years on Earth. And hence, a father actually became younger than his own daughter as we realize in the movie. As mind-boggling as that is, under the theory's relativity, it seems to be that it's entirely possible. Time is not absolute nor universal everywhere in the universe. Now, with that said, why does it feel like time has a particular direction? Let me explain. Suppose if tonight I were to bake a pizza, I could get all the ingredients ready, and of course, the dough ready, and I could put all the ingredients together, roll the dough, get everything ready, put it into the oven and start baking it. Maybe 40 minutes later, I've got an amazing pizza already, golden crust, everything. That sounds like what baking a pizza is like, but it would be a very strange concept to imagine this golden cross pizza suddenly unbaking itself, the ingredients suddenly disassembling itself, and then it formulating back into this clump of dough that I have. That sounds really unnatural. Yet, if you look at the laws of physics and of course the theories of physics, time doesn't seem to be absolute. Many of these theories, they can actually be applied both forward and backward. And since we have established earlier in the video that time is relative, why do we only experience time in one direction? What is actually going on? Well, this may be because of how our universe is. Specifically in the 19th century, Scottish physicist William Thomson and also German physicist Rudolf Clausius, they realized that the universe is also bound by certain laws. And together, they both conceive the laws of thermodynamics. And according to one of these laws, the second law of thermodynamics, generally most systems are moving towards entropy. They're moving from a state of being organized to a state of disorder. And as in fact, because the universe is ruled 
by entropy, where everything is moving towards disorder, that we experience an arrow of time. The universe was at one point very organized, and it's moving from that state of being organized from the Big Bang all the way towards gradual entropy, and that everything in the universe, including us, is also moving towards that direction. Now, we can see entropy in everything. For example, we might be able to build a beautiful house, but eventually that house will crumble over time. We might bake an amazing pizza, but of course, over time, that pizza is going to disintegrate and perhaps rot away. Our human body will also experience entropy as one day we we will face our own mortality. Entropy is in fact pervasive, all-encompassing, and because the universe is governed by entropy and moving towards this order, we experience entropy in action, and that is the experience of time or the era of time that we are experientially part of. So although time might be relative, Entropy, on the other hand, seems to be the one thing that's binding all of us together through the experience of time, at least in this universe that we're in. It is the fact that we go from the state of being low entropy to high entropy, that this almost universal, observable experience that is in everything, that allows us to experience time in a consistent flow. Hence, we can regard entropy as really the arrow of time in that sense. So whether or not time is relative, as long as these physical properties or these physical processes or these physical things are part of the universe and ruled by entropy and the second law of thermodynamics, then eventually entropy will be increasing. And it is really the basis of how we experience time and really even think about our own lives. Things are getting increasingly disorganized with time and eventually into disarray with time. I think one final thing we can consider to kind of perplex you about time is the question of whether entropy can also go the opposite direction. In other words, do things inevitably have to increase in entropy? Can they also move the other way? Indeed, many great physicists have actually tackled this question. In the 20th century, Erwin Schrödinger, who is known as the father of quantum mechanics, actually calculated that it is possible for entropy to develop in different rates, in different quantum instances. If we were, for example, to isolate, let's say, an ice cube that is melting on a quantum level, it is in entirely possible for there to be a different gradients for entropy and its development. Yet the reason why entropy seems to be only in one direction might not be an issue of physical laws in the sense that physical laws do not allow entropy to develop at different rates, even perhaps in a totally different direction, but rather it might be a limitation of the information systems. Because another theorist by the name of Claude Shannon, who was a researcher at the Bell Research Lab at the time working over telephone systems, and Shannon was trying to find a way to manage these telephone systems when there is increasing entropy. And one thing that Shannon discovered is the relation between information within the information system and entropy itself. Generally, in a low entropy system, in other words, a new system, there isn't a lot of data or information. But as entropy progresses, the information and information system gets much more complex. In other words, what Shannon discovered is that our experience of time and entropy and its development seems to relate to the information growth that also happens with entropy itself. Importantly, it suggests that entropy actually adds to the information accumulation of the memory that we have, whereas entropy reduction takes it away. So it seems to suggest that even if we could experience entropy in the other direction, we wouldn't really have information about it because it seems to go against the relationship between entropy and information itself. And this theory was really made much more secured in 2009 using quantum information theory in an amazing paper by Italian physicist Lorenzo Mocconi. And what Mocconi showed in his paper through his calculations and his theorizing is that although time and entropy can be experienced theoretically in any direction, quantum mechanics actually removes information if time and entropy is actually experienced in the reverse. And Mocconi would actually demonstrate this statistically and in his calculations, but he also left us with a very interesting thought experiment. 
He asked us to imagine if there was a person who somehow was in an isolated quantum state, and this other person from this other quantum state is trying to send information to the first person, information that could only be detected by certain devices that would pick it up, and also perhaps the person in the first room observing it by taking down notes. Now imagine if that person was trying to send the information across, and it's being observed, yet somehow this person sending the information can also reverse entropy, then in order to do so, all the information that's being sent would also be retracted back, such that the first person receive this information would suddenly have all the information scrubbed if everything was reversed. It sounds very complicated, but in simple terms, if any of these could be experienced backwards, even if it's theoretically possible, we would have no idea at all. As macroscopic human beings in this universe, in the direct experience of time, even if we could experience a time that flowed in the opposite direction, not governed by the laws of entropy, we would have no idea because there would be no way to actually observe and know of it, at least according to these theories. So in short, although it might be possible that time can be experienced backwards and the universe does not necessarily have to move towards one direction, honestly, we wouldn't know. And all these things really make us think, what exactly is time after all? The physicists, the scientists, they are still in massive disagreements and debate and making a lot of conjecture about what it really is. It truly is one of the greatest mysteries, if you really think about it. And perhaps it's so complicated that we've sort of deceive ourselves to declare time in a more simplistic term as something that we measure on our watches, on our computers, on our phones. But truly, nobody really knows what time it is.